So today I want to rant about, <laughs> I want to rant about, um, I guess, I guess it's sort of like the next step in sort of, the, okay, back up a second. So if you've been a long time viewer of my channel, you know that I have frequently kind of wrestled with this idea of whether or not I should eat meat. In fact, part of the big reason why I got into homesteading was the idea of trying to create a situation where I could produce and harvest my own meat to guarantee that it's the most, um, ethically raised and ethically like murdered, <laughs> ethically processed um, in every conceivable way, it would need me personally making sure. So not only would I have the guarantee that it was humane all the way around, but also that um, that uh, I felt like that I took responsibility. And that was a big part of it too, the spirituality behind of it, behind it, because I've wrestled with whether or not I should eat meat. You know, I, starting from like a, you know, sort of a, there's that sort of spiritual background there and religious, I guess you would say, background about whether or not I should even go down that path. Um, but that, that got started with all these other things in terms of fire, environmental concerns, just a general humanity sort of thing. And I know I get tons of people on my channels who see my hunting videos and, and respond to especially my past videos about, you know, harvesting my own, built, like raising my own meat chickens. You know, I get a lot of flack and a lot of angry comments and death threats from people who don't like the fact that I've at least tried this. Um, the people take a lot of offense, especially because I have, uh, especially because I've, I've, um, because I do, I kind of wrestle that. I kind of am wrestling be between those ideas of, of sort of the ideal spiritual and pure being and the brutal reality that is life. Um, and because I'm willing to entertain both sides, I get attacked from both sides. But anyway, so that's a long history of me doing videos about this topic. But I will say that as time has gone on, I've eaten less meat. Now there was a time, if you remember a few, I don't know, maybe six months ago, I did a video about fearing that I'd have to eat more meat in terms of, it seemed like the chron chronic illness that I was suffering from um, and health in general. That doesn't seem to be the case because at the time I thought I had a lot of food allergies that were gonna restrict my diet to the point of having to eat more meat. I've resolved, and I come to a lot of conclusions about what's going on with my health and my body. I'll talk about that in a separate video because it's not directly applicable to what I'm talking about here, um, which is more kind of like a general kind of rant about eating meat and kind of where I stand with that. So I'll talk about health in a different video. But I wanted to, but it's important to at least mention it because people are gonna be like, well, wait a second, I thought you were gonna eat more meat. So anyway, I've eaten less and less and less meat. Um, and why have I eaten less meat? Well, um, because frankly, I've opened myself up to the possibility of the greater world that is edible plants. So I've moved away from just, you know, potatoes and carrots and, you know, do, I, this new passion I've had about edible perennials especially, but things that I can grow, you know, and I found new joy and like learning about new things that I could, could grow and that I could eat and things I've never really thought about before, like, you know, uh, the hostas that are, that are growing on this property because everyone in the suburb neighborhood has hostas. You can eat hostas. You know, even crazy stuff like sh the shoots of Japanese knotweed, which grows everywhere here. You know, uh, those, those sort of harvested and, and, and gathered foods. Um, just things that I would personally grow, you know, and, and looking at the, the edible perennials that I have now, which is mostly like berry bushes and fruiting stuff, but also like uh, the perennial uh, Egyptian walking onions, and even looking up um, sort of perennial, um, or at least, so perennial greens like sorrel or things like that, um, bloody dock, or plants that are not perennial per se, but they easily recede like lamb's quarters, you know, another kind of like foraged, foraged food. I'm opening myself up to trying and exploring and, and finding all these things that's really got me thinking, wow, I got a lot to try. I got a lot of plants to try. So it's, it's taking less focus off meat. And I've never been a huge meat eater, meat eater. Even at the beginning of these videos, when I first started wrestling, I was basically like, and there was a period of time I was vegetarian and I had to stop that for health reasons. I've talked about that in the past. Again, health needs to be saved for a different, different video. But, um, but I find myself now veering back and eating way less meat to the point where I'm kind of functionally vegetarian at this point. And I know just by saying that, and I'll probably use that as the title of this video, and I'll get a lot of negative comments about it, but um, you know, I think that is a thing. You know, it's like, even if you're not per se against eating meat, or you might eat meat in certain situations, or at least extreme situations, every day I'm basically 
when given the option, and especially now where I'm living, I got plenty of options not to eat meat. I'm just not. You know, we bought, we started buying veggie burgers, for example, when we wanted barbecue in the, in the, the summer. You know, there's, there's so many more options that are now available to me. So that's one of the reasons, too, is that, is that growing passion about various kinds of plants, edible plants, that has influenced me. And um, third is really the, the, the final part of an ongoing sort of thesis I've been exploring since I started homesteading, which is, are animals worth it? Um, worth having? And I don't believe they are on a homestead. I think chickens are very, very handy for a number of reasons. One, you can get eggs. Anyway, I've talked about that in the past. Chickens are awesome. I'll probably do a separate video talking about how, how much I love chickens. But having the quail, you know, they're nice, but they're nowhere as good as chickens. And again, that is a topic for another video. But in general, I've explored from the very get-go that animals are not really worth it as part of a homestead. Not only are they not essential, but they're honestly not worth having. They end up being extremely inefficient in every conceivable way. And at the end of the day, most people just want them because they love meat. Either they love animals or they love meat. And those, that's fine if you want to go through the trouble that they cause and the expense that goes along with them to have that meat. But I've, I've never been particularly valued. I've never valued that that highly. Again, I've never been a huge meat eater to begin with. So sort of that, that third point of, you know, I got into homesteading partially inspired by this trying to find a good humane way to have meat. But now I've concluded that I don't really think it's even worth the effort. Animals are even really worth having. So where does that leave me? You know, I don't know if meat is worth it. You know, like I'm, if I'm not going to, if I don't think animals are worth it to put on my homestead and I'm not investing that time to make sure it's like humane, et cetera, et cetera, then I shouldn't be eating it at all. Um, if I'm not gonna raise it, I'm not gonna eat it. And I'm not gonna go out and purchase it and risk buying God knows what from who knows what. You know, maybe you can make the case if you're buying it from, you know, a local farm, which we do have those around here, despite the fact that I'm in suburbia, maybe. Um, I'm also not ruling out the fact that I might go hunting this year again uh, to try to get a deer and just use that as my source of meat. I haven't ruled that out yet, but at this point I'm like, maybe, we'll see how it goes. And that's going to depend a lot about whether or not I keep my land, because I recently sold my homestead, but I still have five acres of land on the water. That's a different topic. I'm still in the process, so I'll save that for another video. But um, I think that'll play a part of whether or not I do it. So yeah, and who knows how this will develop. But I kind of want to give you an update because this is an ongoing theme in, on this channel and me ranting about, you know, what do I do? I've done tons of videos about vegetarian and my history with vegetarianism and raising meat and is, you know, meat-free homestead and all these other kind of, t all these videos surrounding the sort of topic. So I felt it was important to give an update. So at this point, I'm really functionally vegetarian. I'm trying a lot of new veggies and really enjoying it, a lot of new fruit. So much so that I've actually started a whole new series where I talk about all the new fruit that I'm trying and new edible perennials as I hold up carrot. Not an edible perennial by any long shot. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's so much more to be excited about and enjoy. I don't even know if meat is worth having in my world anymore. So really that's kind of where I've settled on that. So in any case, thank you for, if you've sat through this rant, thank you so much. Um, just wanted to give you an update. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about how this develops. And, you know, I, I'm always in, interested in your input, um, especially on this topic where it's such a complex topic for me. And, um, you know, it, it gets down to the heart. You know, it's very, it, there is like a, a spiritual base here that I'm kind of like building off from. Um, but again, more in the future. We'll see if and when hunting happens this year, what that will mean, how that plays into it. And we'll see if this functional vegetarianism continues. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. But it feels good. I feel like I'm on the right path for whatever that's worth. So in any case, thank you for watching and thank you for joining me on this journey.